Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. As longtime subscribers know, there are a few big name heavyweights out there that I'm skeptical of. Right? Deontay Wilder, I'm very skeptical of. I understand that's not a popular position. He's unbeaten right now, and unbeaten fighters always get the benefit of the doubt. And, of course, he knocks out everyone, right? You know, Ralph Kiner in baseball once said, home run hitters drive Cadillacs, right? The guys who have the high KO percentages rule the roost in boxing. Okay, fair enough. Well, there's a big-time fight happening a week from now between two guys I consider to be more legit than Deontay Wilder, right? And it's a fight between Manuel Char and Alexander Povetkin. Now, I know most people look at Povetkin as a guy who got knocked down several times by Vladimir Klitschko, who lost that fight by a wide margin on the scorecards right now I'll just say this I was extremely disappointed with Povetkin in that fight he looked very limited to me in that fight a guy with his skill set in my opinion quite frankly and I know this lines loaded and I know it's a minority view should have beaten Vladimir Klitschko Right? Povetkin can move in the ring. He didn't have to be so obvious and so front foot heavy that Klitschko was able to tie him up and hug him every time he gets inside. Also, if Klitschko is continually tucking your head under his underarm, Aren't there ways to hide your head on the way in or to change the angle on the way in so Klitschko is not able to simply reach around and grab you? Right? To me, and I, again, I thought Kravetkin was going to win that fight. He didn't. To me, that highlights a lack of an ability to adjust in the ring. I prefer fighters who can adapt fighters who see something different than what they prepared for and can make adjustments in the ring right they don't even need their corner to tell them to make the adjustment now if the fighters a little bit overwhelmed and it happens to the best of them then I want a corner who can say look you need to change this you need to do that. You need to make this adjustment. One of the problems I've had with Povetkin, who strikes me as one of the better athletes in the sport, is that his corner has had musical chairs, right? He was with Teddy Atlas, a great trainer. You know the rest. Somehow, he wasn't able to work it out so Atlas could be in his corner. Teddy has other commitments. Right? He's a boxing analyst here in the United States. I believe that if a fighter is hungry and wants a superstar trainer to be his trainer, and that superstar trainer is willing to be his trainer and has been his trainer in successful outings, to me that fighter needs to find a way to make it work. Teddy Atlas's work schedule should not have been an issue. Atlas wanted to be in Povetkin's corner. Povetkin instead went to plan B and plan C and plan D in his corner, and it showed. 
right, that Klitschko fights disturbing on a host of levels. Why is Povetkin giving away his foot speed? Right, since you know Klitschko doesn't go to the body that often, and since Povetkin is the shorter fighter, why didn't he maximize the height difference by bending at the waist, making it hard for Klitschko to find him, coming in at angles, throw hooks, work Klitschko's body. Right, he didn't do that. He fought a poor fight. Someone needs to call him out on it. I'm doing so right now here online. Very disappointed in Alexander Povetkin. That said, Povetkin can let his hands go. He, he can bend his body such that in a fight against Marco Huck, he's literally bending under Huck's punches. In that fight, he's two-handed. Right, and at times he can overwhelm technicians. Look at the Povetkin Eddie Chambers fight. Right now, let me talk briefly about Manuel Char. You know, Manuel Char to me has long been an underrated heavyweight. Right, this is a guy who, in what I'm sure the public thinks was his worst moment actually was fighting a intriguing fight that in my opinion got prematurely stopped and I'm talking about his fight against in my opinion the best heavyweight of the post Lennox Lewis era Vitaly Klitschko right understand Char has fought the best there is right in my opinion right now in the sport at heavyweight and I thought the fight was interesting you know I like to say knockouts cause amnesia I understand technically Char gets stopped in the fourth round right but if you look at the fight what you're gonna see is that Manuel Char against a devastated knockout puncher against a guy with you know to me more natural talent than his brother Vladimir Klitschko. More skills, right? A guy who can fight different styles. A guy who trusts himself defensively to just lean and let punches miss him. A guy who can drop his hands. He has a good jab, but he doesn't have to come in with it, right? Against Vitaly Klitschko, Manuel Char, I thought, shows great spacing in the ring and talent. Early in the fight he's on his back foot. You'll see him dancing around the ring. He does get stopped, excuse me, dropped in the second round, right? He's fighting a heavy-handed champion. But what's interesting is he never stops believing in himself. And the spacing is interesting. You start to see it in the third round of that fight. Char actually goes on his front foot. He's on his front foot after getting knocked down by Vitaly Klitschko. Right? Mentally, it's going to take more than that. Against a champion who's a heavy favorite to discourage Manuel Char. Right? This guy is mentally tough. If you look at the film, you're going to see he's even motioning. Vitaly Klitschko to come get him right at first he's just throwing a counter left hand then he starts opening up a bit the fight gets interesting understand Klitschko has come out and has thrown hard punches Char has survived the punches Char now is coming forward with more of his game, right? He's figured out that he can take Klitschko's punch. He goes down, but he gets back up, right? He's figured out that he can try to walk down Klitschko. And he's going about it much more intelligently than, let's say, a guy like Derek Chisora, right? Because Char starts out on his back foot, then is slowly working his way to his front foot. Now, sadly, 
he gets cut on his eye, right? Klitschko hits him with the left. It opens a cut on Char's eye. And then, of course, they stop the fight. I thought the stoppage was ridiculous. If you're going to stop a fight based on that cut, then 90% of the matches in boxing would be stopped. Now, no one cared because boxing's an expectation game. Klitschko was the big name in the fight. He was the reigning champion, right? Klitschko had won the first three rounds. But as I've said in an earlier video, the post-fight Mike Alvarado, Juan Manuel Marquez video, boxing's about moments. It's clear that Manuel Char was hoping to push this match to the later rounds so he could open up on Vitaly Klitschko. Right? Let me also point out, too, that the reason why Klitschko couldn't materially hurt Char was because Char has above average defense. The bet I'm recommending here, and I know it's going to sound crazy because Char is a three and a half to one underdog. In other words, according to the casinos, if these fighters fought four and a half times, right, the casinos telling you based on these odds that Povetkin would win three and a half times to every time Char wins. I think that's ridiculous. I think Char is a world-class fighter. I would take Char over Deontay Wilder. The bet I like is Char to win the fight. That's right, the plus 350 underdog hedged with the over in the fight. Right, understand. I know I know Povetkin's knocked out more than 60% of his opponents. But, but Marco Huck went the distance with him. Vladimir Klitschko went the distance with him. Manuel Char is a world-class heavyweight. He's not past his prime like Hasim Rockman, right, who Povetkin stopped, right? He's not past his prime. He's in his prime. He's above average defensively, and in my opinion, he even has a chance to win the fight. So I like Char to win hedged with the over in the fight. But just understand the risk involved. You're fighting a Russian hero in Russia, right? This is Povetkin's comeback fight from his loss against Vladimir Klitschko. He can't afford to lose the fight. If he loses the fight, this would be a significant hit on his resume. This would be back-to-back -back losses after an unbeaten start to his career, right? Just understand, too, that, you know, just like... The crowd was behind Vitaly Klitschko when Char fought Vitaly Klitschko. And just like when Char got cut, there was no one in the arena to say, wait a moment, this that's a minor cut. He can work through this. Just understand that politically, no one's going to cry for Char if he gets cut. And keep in mind, some guys get cut often because of scar tissue and stuff. If he gets cut again, there is the risk that the favored son, you know, gets awarded a stoppage based on cuts. As what happened to Char against Vitaly Klitschko. But based on boxing ability, Char's spacing in the ring, his ability to adjust in fights, the fact that he's a technician, watch how he rolls out his game against Vitaly Klitschko. Look at other fights where he slowly shows you different punches you don't even see in the Klitschko fight. Char throws an excellent uppercut. He can throw it with either hand. You don't even see that in the Klitschko fight. Right? In other fights, Char has shown different punches. Right? I think the casino has mispriced this fight, especially given that this is a comeback fight for um, a previously unbeaten fighter, Alexander Povetkin. 
right? Mentally, it's going to be tough for Vetkin. And here he is in the ring against a mentally tough opponent who's already fought a better fighter than him. So I like Char to win the fight. Hedged with the over, right? If the fight makes it to the later rounds, you're good. Look at the over-under numbers. But understand the risk involved. If Povetkin comes in, Povetkin has some hand speed on him, and gets a stoppage inside of the over, you lose it all. Right? Just understand, too, that Povetkin is a big favorite and is going to get favorable treatment from the judges as big favorites do whatever country. I'm not here picking on Russia. I'm just telling you boxing is an expectation game. And when a guy's a heavy favorite, some of these judges get blinded by the reputations and give the close rounds to the favorites. Right? Just understand that Char is the three and a half to one underdog. Some judge who's going along with the crowd, right, in a fight where Char is fighting a Russian in Russia, right? Some judge who's going along with the crowd and who wants to pick the guy who the crowd likes, who's the favorite, could score some rounds for Povetkin that should go to Char. So it's going to be a bit tough. For Char to win a decision. Nonetheless, I like Char to win the fight. Hedge with the over. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.